Let's move on to the fuel pump and clean its mounting surface. If you have one, lube up your fuel pump push rod and slide it up into the block. If you let go of it, it's gonna wanna slide right out. Just be aware of that until the pump is ready to go in. If you have a cover plate like this, gasket sealer goes on both sides of the plate gasket, then the plate with its holding bolts. Get some gasket sealer for both sides of the fuel pump gasket and some on its mounting point on the block. For most engines, when the balancer is set to top dead center for the number one cylinder, it's easier to install the fuel pump. Make sure that your push rod is up inside the block if you have one and install the bolts and torque them to spec. Moving on to the front, grab your water pump and its gaskets and put plenty of gasket sealer on all the metal and the gasket surfaces. When it all dries a bit, the gaskets will stick right in place and we can treat the water pump bolts with some type of thread sealer. This will keep the water from inside the block from leaking past the threads. If the bolts that hold your water pump thread into the water jacket area of the block, then you absolutely need to seal these threads. Next, all four of these treated bolts got tightened to the pump and torqued to spec. On the top of this motor, the thermostat mounting surface was a little bit pitted from some rust damage, so we just kind of smoothed it out and filled it in with some silicone. Then a little gasket sealer went on both sides of the water neck gasket. Pay attention, make sure that your thermostat is facing the right way before you torque the water neck down. Usually there's a label on them. This heater hose nipple didn't look like it was worth reusing, so a few bucks at the local auto parts store and we shouldn't have to worry about leaks here anymore. Go through your notes and storage bins, and any of your miscellaneous engine externals should all make it back with a...